you know guys this time i'll be teaching you how to georef a scan image or a map scan map using QG 3.16 uh, this exercise i'll be dividing uh, it into two parts first i'll show you how to uh, georef a scan image with printed coordinates and uh, lastly i'll be demonstrating how to georef a scanned map image without coordinates uh, printed in its layout so first thing you need to do of course uh, you need to open your QGIS application so, second is go to menu to toolbar and click cluster and click uh, georeferencer in some older versions uh, there are instances where you don't find this georeferencer geo function so what you need to do is you need to go to plugins click manage and install plugins and in the tabs uh, click installed and make sure that you have the gdal uh, algorithm check and then for you to be able to uh, use the georeferencer function of QGIS. So now let's open the georeferencer window. So here you have the georeferencer window. Uh, next thing that you need to do is you need to click open raster and add the scanned image. Open raster. Okay. Go to your file directory and select the your scanned map. So in this case I'll be selecting this one. Uh, this is a scan map with printed coordinates click and then click open okay so this is a map with coordinates printed so uh, so these are the tools that we can use while we are in this georeferencer window first we have the uh, here here uh, we have the hand shaped icon this is a pan tool wherein you will be able to move the map uh, next to it we have the zoom in tool of course a uh, very self-explanatory then we have the zoom out tool and then we have the zoom to layer tool so a zoom to layer tool allows you to zoom to the full extent of the layer for example if you zoom in zoom in on one portion of the map then you want to get back to the original extent of the map just click this one zoom to layer so this time let's uh, zoom into the reads and gratitudes of the map uh, as you can see we have here the coordinates of, uh, of the map printed very uh, visible so in georeferencing you need to identify at least four gcp or ground control points in the map and make sure that you have the gcp uh, spread out as much as possible because uh, georeferencing is like uh, it's like you have a rubber sheet and then you are stretching it for it to be able to achieve the desired uh, size and then the uh, it's like you are using a pin to pin it to its exact location so you need to have your gcp points uh, well spread out in the map and in adding points, in adding GCP points, make sure that you zoom in to the intersections of these uh, X and Y coordinates. So this is uh, one of the intersections of the X and Y coordinates. Okay. So here, um, we have the uh, vertical running coordinates or the northing or the y coordinates 
So basically, it starts from the bottom of the. It starts from the bottom of the map going up, and its values are uh, increasing in terms of the minutes. If you notice. So let's start at the bottom for you to be able to see what we mean by the values that are increasing so here so we have here uh, seven min uh, seven degrees uh, five minutes and zero seconds here you have seven degrees six minutes and zero seconds so this is the uh, northing or y coordinates the other hand we have the uh, horizontal running coordinates or the easting this one the x uh, coordinates it starts from the uh, left part of our map going to the right and again the value for it's increasing also okay so now let's add the four control points as we mentioned we need to add the control points at the intersection of the x and y coordinates so next step you need to click this one this icon add point and then click the intersection of these uh, x and y coordinates then you have here the enter map coordinates uh, dialog window what you need to do is you need to record or input the coordinates of this particular intersection so for us to view i'll just uh, be zooming out so for the uh, north thing we have seven degrees and you need to add space space six minutes zero zero seconds then for the east thing or for the x we have one two five space 35 minutes space zero zero seconds and click ok so now we have our first point zoom to layer for us to be able to see the extent of our map okay so uh, next point again we have to spread out the gcp for us to be able to stretch out the map accordingly so for the next point i'll have this in intersection here to zoom in again click add point and click to the click the intersection of this x and y coordinates and then again you'll be prompted to enter the x and y coordinates so for the uh, for the easting, we have one two five space thirty seven space zero. Then for the northing, we have seven seven degrees space six minutes space zero zero. Then click OK. So now we have two GCP or two control points. Now let's add the third one. So I'll have the intersection here. So I'll have this intersection. This one. So again, click add point and so this is the intersection you need to zoom in so that you'll be able to see the finer detail because as much as possible we want to get the uh, we want to get to the pixel point uh, level in terms of the accuracy of placing the control point for example here so click add point Again, I'll be zooming into the full extent of the map so that I'll be able to check the coordinates. 
So for the east thing, we have 125 space 37 space 00. And for the north thing, we have 7 degrees space 4 minutes space 00 and click OK now we are down to our last point for our last point let's have this perception here so let's have this intersection here Then click add point and then point to the intersection on these coordinates. Then input the x and y values. So for the another thing we have 7 degrees, 4 minutes and 0, zero seconds. And for the east thing we have 125 space 35 minutes space 00 seconds. Then click OK. So now we, that we have the four control points or four ground control points, click zoom to layer. So the next uh, step that we need to do is we need to click this icon here. We need to set the transformation parameters or the transformation settings. So for the transformation type, since we have a squarely scanned map, polynomial one will suffice. In some uh, instances, if you have a scanned map that is a little bit uh, skewed, you need to you might want to experiment with this other transformation type. But per experience, I I was able to get a desired uh, output using this one in place line if you have let's say more than 10 uh, control points but for this case since we have a square list scan map let's use this one polynomial then for sampling method uh, since again we have a fairly uh, scan map uh, square list scan map let's uh, use this one here is neighbor in some cases uh, i've tried using Lang zones or and cubic spline. It depends on the uh, complexity of the number of uh, GCPs that you'll be using. So here, very important. This is a very important step. Uh, if you are new to QGIS and you have not done any georeferencing, uh, this part here might appear blank. So this might appear blank. So what you need to do is you need to click this one, select CRS, and in the filter or search bar, type in uh, 4, 2, 5, 3. 4, 2, 5, uh, 3. Uh, this is the EPSG of the uh, Luzon 1911. Uh, EPSG are the unique identifiers for all of the coordinates. Would be easier for you to just type the PSG. Then here you have the Lozo 1911. So we are using Lozo 1911 because we want to uh, locate this scanned map to where it really uh, uh, is located on the globe. So since we need to use uh, degrees, Lozo 1911 uses uh, degrees as its unit of measurement so that's why we, we are using this and for planning purposes this is the standard uh, uh, geographic coordinate reference system that uh, we are using so i just would like to emphasize that when you are georeferencing a scanned map for the first time you need to select first a geographic coordinate don't go selecting a projected coordinate which has meters as its units of measurement because when you overlay it on the 
Google Earth or on the satellite image, it would not uh, locate to its proper address because you're uh, jumping already to a projected coordinate. Always make sure that you are using first the geographic coordinate coordinates, uh, and then if you want to measure areas later on, then that's the time that you are going to reproject it to a coordinate reference system that uses uh, uses meters as is as its uh, unit of measurement. So in this case, use Luzon and Pinelab. You need to make sure that you're using a geographic coordinate first. Okay, let's proceed. For the output raster, uh, we are going to select the folder where, where we are going to save this file. So as a good practice, always uh, indicate the uh, coordinate, the coordinate reference system that you're using. So in this case, I'll be typing in zone 1911 as the suffix of the file for me to be able to identify what is the uh, coordinate reference system that this file is I'm using. So click save and then for the compression you don't want to of course compress the data here because it would render an erroneous or it would render your data in a in an unusable uh, manner so just leave it as it is none uh, you can save your gcp points so I'll, I'll be saving the gcp points and then uh, here you have the option to uh, generate a pdf map of your geo referenced uh, scanned image and also you can generate a pdf report wherein you can view the rmse or the root uh, mean square error but in this case i don't want to save it so lastly uh, click load in qgis when done so that after georeferencing the file will be transferred to the main QGIS window. So now that we have set the transformation settings, um, you will now be able to uh, check the the mean error based on your uh, based on the points that you have recorded. So in this case, I have a mean error of 1.08. Uh, in some literatures, they suggest that you have to achieve an a RMSE of at least uh, half or less than half of the pixel size of your image. But in some cases, if you are just aiming to get a mean error of let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.01 or if you want to get a small mean error it does not automatically follow that your georeferenced map will be aligned when you overlay it on the satellite image so as experience we uh, make it a practice that we are aiming to uh, to achieve a properly aligned map because that's the goal of georeferencing you want your map to be aligned the features of your scanned map, for example, the road networks, will be aligned when you overlay it on the satellite image. Again, it does not follow that if you have a small RMSE value, you get a properly aligned map. So in this case, we want to have a map that is aligned properly. Okay, so now that we have uh, set the transformation parameters. Now let's click this uh, icon here, start georeferencing, so that QGIS will be now uh, computing using the algorithms that we have set. So start georeferencing. Okay, so now we can now close the georeferencer window. So now uh, we have here the view reference map and it is uh, overlay on the satellite image. Now again to check if our process is accurate. Uh, what you can do is you can adjust the opacity of this scanned map. 
this is the layer of the geo reference up you can adjust the opacity you can do right click then go to properties then adjust the uh, here you have the information of course uh, you can see the for the interference system that uh, of the map so you have here unit of measurement you have degrees so go to transparency and then you can adjust this slide uh, slider tool for the global opacity let's say let's say 45 or then click apply now you can do a visual uh, accuracy assessment by checking the alignment of the features of your scan map to the to that of the satellite image so what you want to see are the road networks the shorelines the river banks they are aligned that's uh, one way of adjusting the opacity now if you have enabled the style manager here this right portion you can alternatively go to um, go to here this is the transparency option and then again you can adjust the opacity according to your uh, liking so let's try to zoom in to some of the features on the ground and let's check the alignment of our of our G reference map to our satellite image. Okay, so in some areas there are some deviations in terms of the alignment, <clears throat> but generally you have a what we have here is a fairly aligned map, which we can now use when we want to digitize uh, land features. you can see there are some deviations here so this is supposed to be the national uh, road which is offset uh, let's say for about let's try to check um, about uh, give and take uh, 20 meters so uh, this is how you do ref the scanned image or map with coordinates using the printed coordinates as reference so for us to be able to uh, get or achieve a map that is aligned in terms of its uh, features for example web networks intersections intersections of the web networks shorelines what you can uh, do is you get the coordinates from a control map or control base map instead of just using the uh, printed coordinates and that way you'd be uh, achieving a much more uh, aligned map Okay, so that's it. That's how you gear up a scanned image with printed coordinates. Next time, I'll be demonstrating how to gear up a scanned map, scanned image without coordinates printed. Stay tuned.